Today, I'm going to talk about five things you should know about metal powder production. In particular, I'm going to focus on the electrodeposited powders. And in the electroplating world, a powder is a very bad thing. So I'm going to talk about doing a very bad thing, but doing it consistently. So first of all, there's five typical ways of making metal powders. You can take the metal, vaporize it, and collect the powder from the vapors. You can melt it and collect the powder that way. You can grind it into very fine particles. You can precipitate powders. And fifthly, you can electrodeposit powders. And those are the powders I'd like to talk about today. So the second point, talking about electrodeposited powders, there's two real key differences in electrodeposited powders. You can make something that wants to be a powder. The crystal structure is making a powder. So silver from silver nitrate, for instance, it wants to make a powder. You make a sugary type of crystal. Um, it's a powder every time. If you change the solution you're making that powder from, for instance, you use silver nitrate, you'll make a plate. And so there's two distinctions there. We want to try and make powders. And so I'm going to focus a bit more on the powders. So thirdly, I'd like to talk about the conditions that we can control to make these powders consistent. And these are the levers, the levers that we can pull. There's metal concentration in solution that you're electrodepositing from. Um, there's the time that you produce the powder. So the longer the time that you can grow powders. Um, there's the movement in the solution, the flow rate in the solution that controls it. There's temperature. So there's many different things we can control to, to, to make these powders come out differently. Fourth, I'd like to talk a bit about surface areas. Powders have a unique property. They have a very high surface area. And if you take, for instance, one milligram of copper and you make it into a sphere, you'll have a sphere about 600 microns in diameter. Now, 600 microns, that's about 10 times the thickness of a human hair. Um, so I, I don't have much hair, so in terms of putting it in another perspective, five times the thickness of a dollar bill. Um, now you take that powder, or take that one micro, microgram of, of copper powder, and you split it into a thousand pieces. Now I'm going to have a thousand spheres, and they're going to be 60 microns, so they're going to be a tenth of the diameter. You've now increased the surface area just by splitting that piece of copper. Yeah, that surface area now is 10 times. So it's about 10 or 11 uh, square millimeters per milligram. So that's now a much more active surface area. That powder's got more activity. And you can go on splitting that powder down finer and finer and finer. Into, you'll get into the nanoparticles. Um, the other way is to, to stretch it, change the shape. So I can take that one milligram of copper and I'm going to stretch it into a long piece of wire, 10, 10 meters long. Now that 10 meter wire is going to be 4 microns in diameter. But it's going to have now almost 120 times the surface area of that original piece of copper. So it's the same amount of copper, but it now has 120 times the surface area. And that surface area now has much more activity, and that 1 milligram of copper can now react a lot more. So fifth. And lastly, I'd like to talk about how we can increase the surface area of powders um, by the shape. Uh, nature's been doing this for millions of years. Um, you know, we have uh, prickly creatures that are all developed um, to, to, for, for reason. Uh, we have plants there. I mean, the surface area to volume ratio is critical to the survival of plants. They adapt. And they've done some very smart things and developed some very interesting shapes um, to be able to do this, as you can see here. Um, and I guess in, in the laboratories, people are trying to create uh, higher and higher surface area uh, materials. Uh, Northwestern University created something called NU110, where they have a surface area of 7,000 meters square per gram. So it's taking one gram would cover one and a half football fields in terms of surface area. Um, coming back to the start, what we're trying to do is make uh, very poor deposits. 
um, under controlled conditions really to, to try and increase that surface area and, and change the shape. And you can see here there's some different shapes we've created. They mimic nature. You can see the fern-like structures, needle-like structures, and really controlling conditions to make poor plate can make some very, very good powders. And it's quite surprising and quite good to, to be able to, to benefit from this. Thank you.